Hello everyone and welcome back to The Game Shed with me, Mark, and it's only been one day since I released my AutoBleam 0.5.1 installation tutorial, and annoyingly, <laughs> 0.6 actually came out today. It is being called a beta because there's some stuff in there that isn't quite finished, it sounds like, or stuff that may not work 100%, but we are building, obviously, towards 0.6.1 which will be in line with the .0 release and the .1 release that AutoBleam are doing. This will be pretty much in the same vein as the install we did yesterday. Uh, for those of you watching the video later on, it will be the same as the 0.5.1 install but there is new files to upload to your USB stick. So without further ado, let's move on to the install and let's get this up and running. Right, here we go. Here is the page, the GitHub, as same as before, version 0.6.0 beta released. Please update your installations here. So, uh, as always, it's the same link to get the software. I will come on to that in just a second. As you can see here, is it stable and is it safe to use? It's pretty stable, but it is beta. So some elements are not fully finished, as I said before. Should be more stable than 0.5.0. It is well tested by multiple users, but until 1.0, it is still pre-release. So the building blocks are there, getting up to that 1.0 release, very similar to the way BleemSync did things to get to their 1.0 release. Right, so features, let's just run, run through these very quickly and then I'll get straight on to how to do it. Replaces BleemSync boot menu and Sony UI fully for better experience, interesting. Integrated functionality to share memory cards between games. Separates games and it saves states into separate folders, that's good. Also, Bleem does not need to run anything on the PC. Just copy games to USB dongle and plug it in. We all know about that. Does not use any internet or USB connection. Modifies or replaces the stock UI to show added games. Ah, this is what I was talking about in the last video. The fact that you, you couldn't have it all on the same carousel. That is there now. Uses game names as folders instead of numbered folders. Can create game folders automatically. Supports multi-disc games. Good stuff. Includes offline metadata and cover art databases. No download needed during sync. Good stuff. Runs on boot of the PlayStation Classic as it was designed to do so from the beginning. Intelligent algorithm is trying to fix missing files like Q, Unpack, ECM. Create folders for games if dropped directly to games folder. Uh, and on and on. Small footprint as written in native language for PlayStation Classic. It is fast. Good stuff. Works with no issues with multi-track games. Supports QBin and not encrypted PBP. Can launch RetroArch software. No need to run anything on the PC. Supports all themes of both Auto Bleam and Sony menu. Configure all filter settings. Supports multi-disc games. They've done the multi-disc game thing like three times in there. <laughs> Speaks your language. Ability to quick boot and change game resolution. Ability to scale the screen up to 16 by 9 for modern TV screens. Wow, that is a new one. That is very, very interesting. Point 24 is a great one. I love that. Makes your PlayStation Classic a great device. Okay, so there you go. It's got the download link right here. Download the zip file from the release page here. And you can select one of the packages. 0.6.0 full contains all covers. 0.6.0 NTSU, PAL-E, NTSCJ contains only covers for the selected regions. And then the clean version has no cover databases. They have to be installed manually. Uh, it goes through how to do it. That's what we're going to do right now. So here we go. Here is the release. AutoBleam 0.6.0 Beta 1. So all we do here is we scroll to the bottom. We are going to grab the full zip. Here we go. So let's click on that. Let that download. Okay, so once that has finished downloading, all you have to do is open up the zip file as so. Here are the folders that you need to copy across onto your USB stick. So I'm just going to put that into my PC and then we just need to open up our USB stick. So I put them side by side so you can see the similarities. So all you need to do at this stage is delete the auto bleam and the system folders as so. Let that delete. Once that's deleted, highlight this all and copy it across. And it will copy across with all the files that you require. If you get this prompt to replace files, then just click on replace files in the destination. Those are most likely the theme files, just replacing those. So once that copy across is complete, you are done. You are able to take your USB out of your PC and put it back into your PlayStation Classic. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, once again, USB into port two, make sure the power is unplugged. Plug the power in after that. Wait for the PlayStation Classic to come up and then we're going to turn it on once it comes up. Let's move over onto our PlayStation Classic here. 
and let's turn this on and see what we got. Okay, so this is a new screen. You can see here importing internal games. Games changed. Press X to scan. This all looks completely different. And because I'm getting in the way of the lovely logo below, I've moved myself to the top just to make things a bit nicer. Okay, so games changed. Press X to scan. Let's check this out. Again, I've still only got those two games in there um, that I put in the last tutorial and uh, it's picked them up fine. So let's have a look at what we've got here. Press start for auto bleam, press X for rescan, square for retro arch, triangle for about. So it's all it's all pretty much the same. So let's press triangle, let's see what it says. Uh, pretty much the same thing as before, which is cool. Um, select for options, L1 for advanced. Oh, and there's a new one on the end there, L2 and R2 for power off. That's an interesting one. So first and foremost, let's have a look at the options that we get now. So language, English, same as before. Auto bleam theme, menu theme, UI, here we go. So we've got the classic UI or the evolution UI. Internal games, you get to see those on the carousel. Wide screen, quick boot, background music, GFX filter show retro arch and advance so the ones that have been added are clearly widescreen internal games and the ui so those have been chucked in there uh, background music we can turn that off as before or turn it on it's completely up to you so what i'm going to do i'm going to enable widescreen i really want to see this up and running and i'm going to go back let's have a look at the advanced options l1 and let's see if there's any difference with the game manager Game Manager looks exactly the same. Let's click on those. We've got the high res still there. Change MC, share MC, go back. So let's go back. Let's um, let's enable this high res. See how that looks with widescreen metal slug. This is going to be interesting. So press start to go into auto bleam. Oh wow, look at this. It looks completely different. Wow. So I've got all the games that are internal. Plus I should have, there you go, Metal Slug and Doom. Strangely they've got the original covers for Metal Slug and Doom, but not for any of the other games. But you'll notice there, it actually says USB HD as well. So if I go over onto Doom, it should say the same thing. There you go, USB HD. Uh, so it's got extras in there guys. So let's click on the Auto Bleam theme settings. There you go. So it actually takes you to the Auto Bleam settings from here rather than from having to go from that menu before. So using the quick boot is not so bad now unless you want retro arc. So I would think about that. If you want retro arc, then don't do the quick boot. But if you're not bothered and you just want the carousel, then you don't need it. You just can go straight to the uh, the quick boot, which is right there. So let's open up Metal Slug. Let's see this in widescreen mode with HD graphics. See what we're up against. So there we go, Metal Slug in widescreen with HD graphics. I'm not seeing a huge difference in the graphics, but widescreen is awesome. That is going to make a massive, massive difference. So let's see the game actually up and running and see how it looks. Okay, there you go. There's the game up and running in widescreen. Wow. I love it. I love it. So some people won't be too happy with that <laughs> using the widescreen mode because it is not the original way it looked. But for some others who want to actually fill up their screens and don't want to have black bars or the overlays, then this is a great, great option. Okay, so I've reset out the game and as you can see, there's something brand new here. Look at this. We have four save slots per game. This is awesome. So this is brand new. So let's try saving to that save slot. And if I now scroll over here, you can see the resume points. I have four of them. Four of them. That is so good. So let's click on that and see how well that works. Let's give this a go. There you go. Straight back in as you'd hope. Wow. That is awesome. So all I've done is I've pressed reset to go back to this. And you can actually decide whether you want to save it in any of these slots by just pressing reset. Man, this is, this is really good. This is really, really good. There's some stuff missing still, but... Overall, this is a great update. 0.6 has some really, really cool stuff in it. So I just want to show you briefly the changing of the themes. As before, look at this. It just scrolls through them, but this time you can change them from within the main menu. So from within the carousel, you can actually go to the settings and change those themes. I mean, that is, that is fantastic. Let's see what happens if I turn off the internal games. I should just be presented with the two. Look at that. It's actually got a full carousel of the same two games, uh, which is cool. There you go. Something a bit different. Let's turn those internal games back on. I love the fact of how easy that is. Look how easy and quick that is to get the internal games up. 
Okay, so it kind of feels like the only thing missing at this stage is being able to get to Retroarch from this screen. Um, but there is one other thing that I wanted to test for you guys that we saw before in those options. It is to power off the PlayStation using L2 and R2. So let's do that and give that a go. Look at that. Wow. That is a brilliant, brilliant option. So to turn off your PlayStation Classic from within the menu, you can just do L2 and R2. Bob's your uncle, off you go. Brilliant, love it. Okay, so let's just get ourselves back to our desktop. There are other themes available for Auto Bleem. If you join up to the Auto Bleem Discord, there is a room there called Auto Bleem Themes and there's a few in there. So I'm gonna have a look at those. I'm gonna give those a go and see what they're like. Uh, people are obviously requesting themes as well. So as you can see here, someone wants the 20th anniversary theme. That would be awesome. But there are a few more themes there. I'm sure there will be lots to come. So that is 0 0.6 guys. Auto Bleem 0 0.6 is out. Go and download it. All the links are in the description below for you. I know we only covered 0 0.5.1 yesterday, but 0 0.6 is out. So go and download it, go crazy. Let me know how you get on and let me know if you've got any questions in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like the video if this has been useful and subscribe to the channel if you wanna get notified when we do any more of these type of videos. Thanks once again guys, I will see you next time.